just to do a little background before we get started because it's one of our first videos I guess so try to give everybody a little insight we're in the solar mining room I guess of my barn I've got 12 inverters okay and everything's running right now I mean we're mining we're doing about two petahash right now and everything looks a little sketchy probably for people who aren't electricians but just so everyone knows everything is breakered for everything it's thousand volt insulation so it's not an issue solar wire can be exposed I'm working on getting all the mounts done in the field for all the panels I've got roughly 250 kilowatts worth of panels it just takes a minute to put them up there's only one of me and uh, cloning's not really working yet so this is what we got um, these last three inverters don't have any solar hooked up to them it is in the field but the trenching and the conduit will maybe this weekend maybe next week i'll try to video some of that for those but the other nine do have solar hooked up to them got my panel over here yeah it's open and exposed but there's no one around here that's going to lick their fingers and stick them in there okay everything is set up for three phase you got one two three four five everything's labeled and color coded okay brown is phase one orange is phase two just like normal yellow is phase three okay the nice thing about inverters that i guess a lot of people in the conventional mining maybe not aware of the inverters can do three phase european power american power split phase single phase doesn't matter you just tell them what you want and right now we have 12 inverters and each three is a phase so there's four number one phases four number two phases and four number three phases each inverter puts out roughly 30 amps give or take so you have 30 amps times four for each phase so you have 120 amps total on each phase okay currently we're pulling about 35 amps because we only got four water cools running off of this setup right now uh, this obviously is just temporary this will be the box that all these relays fit in this feeds both of the mining shelves which right now are full of all my gear but all the three wires of each will go to each miner so and each miner will be hooked to a relay so that i can control them off my phone turn them off and on right now to run our pump we got a european to american converter because it was more bang for the buck as opposed to a dry transformer it just converts 240 to 120 and that runs the pump and that's the same thing it's a little wi-fi controlled relay so i can turn it off and on from my phone so at the end of the day after i've showered and eaten and i'm sitting on the couch watching youtube i don't have to get up and walk out to the barn again to shut everything off i can just turn it off on my phone once the batteries get low enough to that point which is the point of adding more batteries the more batteries i have the longer they'll run the more money we make this is the dc bus okay it's 48 volts and yes you can touch both of them at the same time with one hand it's dc no one's going to die no one's going to get electrocuted it's dc 48 volts low voltage there is a tremendous amount of current going through it this is a 200 amp shunt so that i can monitor how much current is going through it this is all the inverters where they tie in each one of course labeled so it's easy to sort out later which one goes where this is just a little tie in off of it so that i can tie in my little controller and monitor system the solar assistant so i can watch on my phone 
it ties into the battery pack so I can see the current in and out, the state of charge, everything on the batteries. And it also ties into the inverters so I can see what the inverters are doing. And this just lets me monitor everything on my phone because I do work out of town some and when I work out of town, I can still see what's going on and if I need to turn another miner on because we got some extra power or turn a miner off because we're running low, I can do that from my phone and it just makes it more convenient. Uh, everything is air conditioned. It's probably about 650 square feet in here. It's a three ton mini split. Barely keeps up when everything's full bore. That's how much heat the inverters generate. As for me, I know this is kind of our first like live video with me on camera, just so everybody knows a little bit about me. I am a licensed electrician and a licensed mechanical contractor. And mechanical is not fixing cars, kind of sounds like it would be, but it's not. It's HVAC, chillers, mini splits, refrigeration, that type of stuff. That's what a mechanical contractor is. I'm licensed up to 500 tons. So chillers that do process cooling and plants and generally what I work on. I don't do a whole lot of residential anymore. I do do some, obviously I did this. Um, save all the time. So I've been doing this a long time, roughly about 30 years for refrigeration and HVAC and about 25 years as an electrician. So, uh, so that's me in a nutshell. Uh, I was in the military as a nuclear electronics technician, worked on electronics. Uh, so I have a pretty good understanding of electronics and we do have a lot of stuff happening. I did own an internet company built that up, a fiber optic network, sold it. And uh, I've got a lot of stuff ordered. You know, everything comes from China these days, pretty much. Like the batteries just finally showed up. I ordered them back in March, I think, March or April. And uh, I've got a bunch of conversion kits coming. So we have some air-cooled miners too. We have about a dozen of those. and. Uh, not a big fan of the loud um, and I believe that we can modify the power supplies and water cool them and probably turn 95 tera hash machines into 200 tera hash machines we are water cooling with actual water we're not going through an air conversion I think most of the water cool currently in existence in the mining industry anyways is water cooled as an intermediary step. They water cool the equipment but then they convert to air again for the final transfer to the environment. And as a mechanical contractor in my world that's called air cooled but I know people will argue that with me but ours are actually water cooled the entire way. Uh, there is no part where we have a fan in our system at all. It's entirely pumps and heat exchangers. Okay, our supply water is 65 degrees. It's kind of a problem for the ant miners. We've had to work around them a little bit because they won't accept water below 72 degrees. They think it's too cold, which uh, the only workaround I've found currently besides mechanical workaround as in starting them up with the heat exchanger not being cooled and then adding the cooling water slowly is to run the Vanish firmware. And I'm not a, so much of a computer guy but the Vanish firmware seems to be really good. Um, it doesn't care what the water temperature is. And if you're running a water cooled device, I would think that you would want your water at 33 degrees. That's typically where 
all process water cooled equipment runs is 33 to 34 degrees. You want it just above freezing so it's not freezing your equipment, but you want it as cold as possible, therefore you can run as much process as possible. So I do have a refrigeration system that I can refrigerate my incoming water because you have to go back and think for a minute. Everything we have is solar, so electric expenditure is not really something that figures into my equation. We have plenty of electric, but right now I'm still more concerned on sorting out how we get around this 20 degree Celsius problem. And um, like I said, the only way I've found so far is to either baby start them little bits at a time, which is very inconvenient, or run the Vanish firmware, which seems more reasonable. It just runs, doesn't care. Colder the water, the better. It'll actually ramp up the terahashes as the water's cooler. So most of our machines right now, we're running, um, 10% over on the hash rate and the temperature on the chips is 47 48 degrees Celsius um, and I believe from what I've read and understand that you can run those chips up to even 65 or 70 degrees Celsius so I believe with additional power supplies paralleled up you could probably push machines up to 300% of what they're rated at as long as you can keep them cool, and I believe I can keep them cool with what we're using. We use spring water as our water that cools the heat exchangers, and then the heat exchangers cycle glycol between the machines. Uh, I run taco circulator pumps. They run 25 gallons per minute. I run four machines off of each pump which puts it at basically twice the volume the machine requires, which lets me push the hash rate up and still keep the chips well below normal operating temperature. The only problem I run into that way is I run out of power supply. The power supply is only has so many watts. And after I max out the power supply, my chips are still at 47 degrees, so I could push them farther so I'm contemplating putting in a DC power rail for 12 volts and just hooking up three phase power supplies to it and then tapping each miner to it so that it can get as much power as it needs to run as fast as it can possibly run. I don't know, it'll be experiments, we'll see. we we'll go. I've ordered the water cooling kits for the air cool because they're gonna be my guinea pigs just because they're loud and annoying. And we're gonna see if we can convert them to water, get them nice and quiet, switch to a three-phase power supply. But this is still all kind of new to us. We've only been doing this for four or five months, maybe, I guess. And uh, so there's still a learning curve that's gonna come into play, but I'll try to video all of it so you can see if it goes good or if it blows up, you know. Listen, I've been known to blow things up. It, it happens, but sometimes you send it too hard. But anyways, that's enough, I guess, of the backstory.